running fans, jumping fans, stowing fans, all around athletics fans. Welcome to Talking in Ovals. I'm Alex Cuesta, partner in crime sitting over there is Dave Hyatt. What's going on, my man? I'm a little under the weather, but when it's game time, you got to step up and keep on going. That's what I like to hear. There's no excuses. Play like a champion, right? Absolutely. I don't even care. You know, hospital beds. We're, we're live now. We got to start filming. We'll have our significant others. We have phones, laptops. right? Yeah, we got phones. We're, we're just going to do it <laughs> wherever, whenever, damn it. But how is everything going over there? You feeling, you feeling a little sick? Nah, a little bit. I, I think I'm just tired. I had a very long weekend trip with the family, a lot of walking. So, you know, I'm trying to get my fat butt back in shape over here. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just sore. You know, I'm, I'm old. Are you guys on spring break over there for Manisquan? Uh, nope. We, uh, Starts Friday. So we okay. have this Monday through Thursday this week, and then c- come Friday, we're off. Up here in New York, spring break where I am in the Hudson Valley is started in earnest this week. This so, week. Yeah, and then they get off Monday and everything, and they're yeah. back Tuesday. Well, cool. that's like we get off Friday, and then we're off next week. Kind of makes sense. It's yeah. always that 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 week prior, week after Easter. It's, you know, yeah. kind of hit them. Luckily, I have the same spring, spring break as my daughter, so. That works out. I get some extra time with them, which is nice. There you go. That is awesome. So before we get into fun stuff, today is Monday, March 25th to 2024 for episode 81. Wow. We are well into the 80s now. So if you like what you hear today, give us a like, share, follow, subscribe, rate, five star, Spotify, and iTunes. Go spread this word of mouth. We want to thank everyone for watching. If you are watching on X, hello. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. If you're on X, give us a repost. Um, share this out. Let everyone know that we're on. If you're on YouTube, smash that like button. Yeah. Hit subscribe. Share this word of mouth. Let's get everyone out there to and send a question in the, the chat. We are here ready to answer. Yes. Yes. Send the question, whether it's via X or via, um, you know, YouTube, we'll put you up on the screen on the bottom there. We'll answer and it'll be a good time. So before we jump in last week's show, we had some fun. It was a marathon a little bit. We had almost a two yeah. hour show because Dave and I were yapping in the beginning as we waited on our guest Capers Williamson to jump on. He's a pro javelin thrower, Olympic hopeful. And when he came on, he brought the fire. Oh, it was it great. Was fun talking to Capers, um, extremely passionate, a fantastic athlete, somebody who ranked number two in the nation right now. So has a really good chance of making the Olympics. So and he didn't start till college. Yeah. So every, everyone out there who thinks that it's too late, I didn't do anything in high school. He started in college and now he's was, you know, second at US Nationals last year. So yeah. it's never too late until you're my age. Then it's too late. I mean, even my age, 35 is pretty hard <laughs> to get in. If you've been doing a whole lot of nothing, 35 is <laughs> is not an easy time. Pa- past 25, things get harder and harder, right? Like the, oh, I, yeah. I made the joke to my wife. What age, Dave? What age is it that when falling down becomes scary? Because it just happens random. Like wow. at random at one point, like falling down, it's like you get down there and you're just like, Am I dead? Okay, next check. Did I break it? I mean, like it happens quick. I'm at the point where sometimes it's scared to just walk. <laughs> <laughs> just get out of your chair and start walking. Like, oh, I can't get up. <laughs> All right. So we're not going to do the marathon this week because our guest is here. He's yep. hanging out with us. We are excited to continue our trackstar.me Olympic Dream Series. And we're pumped to have on Tanner Bird, professional weight thrower and amateur hammer thrower. Tanner, what's going on, man? Going good. How's it going? Yeah, pumped to have you on. Pumped to have you on. So um, anyone wants to go follow Tanner, you can go on to Berg Throws on IG and at TJ Berg 99 on X. Go give him a follow. Go give him a support. So we're pumped to have you on. And I just want to jump right into it with you. We always start with the question about your throwing journey. I don't want to hear about when you started yet, but I want to hear about when you got that spark. Because you know what? We all, some of us like, People have, you know, started doing track for whatever reason, and it was their secondary thing, but then something clicks. When was that moment for you that something clicked that you were just like, yeah, I'm probably going to throw out for the rest of my life and try and make this a big thing? It probably had to be my freshman year. Uh, so that's when I first learned how to throw the hammer and the weight or whatever. But my first collegiate hammer throw, first legal throw, was our school record wow wow and i was like oh well sh- shit let's keep doing it uh, <laughs> That's a good you know and yeah, as yeah. time went on the scholarship some motivation got little, there <laughs> got a little better scholarship got bigger so i was like yeah, this, this is gonna pay for college so um but then i went on my fifth year so my covid senior year whatever and won a national championship 
the D2 National Championship in the hammer. And I thought, yeah, I, I don't really want to grow up yet. Uh, <laughs> I keep throwing. And my wife was fully supportive about it. So that's say that's that's more than half of the battle right there. Right. I mean, the other half on on board, and you are good to go. Right. And it's I mean, actually pretty easy to do too. So, <laughs> so what? Um, you're married. That's ninety five percent. Yeah, being honest. <laughs> what state are you from? And did they have hammer in high school? Because here in New Jersey, it is not an it's it's not an competitive event. So I'm just curious if uh if if that's an event that you were just introduced to in college, or was that around at your disposal in high school? Uh, I'm originally from South Dakota, and that's where I went to college as well. And uh, no, we didn't. No yeah. hammer in high school. I mean, I worked with my dad doing construction. That's the only hammer I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I went to college, and I actually went on uh, when I went on my recruiting visit, he my coach uh, he handed me the weight the weight throw. It's thirty five pounds. And yeah. I think I was, well, you know, you're gonna throw this thing when you get here. And I was like, for for what like how do you throw that <laughs> thing and he goes ah, don't worry about it we'll, we'll teach you and you know they did teach me it took some time but it wasn't so very were you, fun at first <laughs> were you your regular uh typical shot put disc thrower in high school yeah yeah, yeah. so just just shot and disc uh had no need or want to try and throw a javelin <laughs> um it was like six three and two forty yeah Something too big to throw a javelin. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we we found out last week, you know, because a lot of people think weights that you guys throw shot disc and jab, but jab is its own unique yeah, event where you don't have to be big and strong. It, it's all about technique and arm speed and keeping your arm back, and it's it's way way different than the the other two. Yeah, they. I mean, they're kind of a weird group. I I'd, I'd uh, compare <laughs> them to like the the pole vaulters of the world. You know, they're just they got this weirdness to them that. Uh, you know, they're very, very athletic. Yes. Pole vaulters and the jab throwers, very, very athletic. Yeah. But they don't really quite fit in with all the other events, right? I mean, I yeah, think you get those steeple, unique individuals. You get those steeple yeah. chasers in with them. I know steeple chasers are distance guys, but they're a special type of painful type of guys. Want to <laughs> jump over shit while running distance? Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, running in general, man. I don't. Hey, 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 relax there. You're with me. I can't me. remember the last time I ran and enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. <laughs> well, here's a question for you. So you're sitting there, you're in school, you get handed this weight. Is there a little bit of an intimidation? Like it's this ball hanging on a chain. And now I'm expected to spin around and not wrap this thing around my body somehow. Like actually know when to throw it, not kill somebody. Was there a little bit like, I'm going to hurt someone. What are you making me do with this? Like, <laughs> Uh, no, it was more like, oh, if anybody gets in the way, they're going to get hurt. And it's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, we, so smaller D2 school, uh, we had to share our indoor facility with, um, softball and baseball. So it's basically like this big net system hanging from the ceiling. And, wow. you know, we're throwing into a net while they have their batting cages on the other side of the nets. And then there's also like walk spaces between them. Oh God! So, so so it was hard. Very to, sketchy. So, so it was hard to decipher exactly how far you were actually throwing because you were just throwing into the actual net. Well, yeah, we for I mean up in South Dakota, winter is ten months out of the year, pretty much. Right. Yeah. And then in June and July, it's hot as shit. <laughs> it doesn't so make it any like, sense to me. But you don't want to be outside at all. <laughs> no. I mean, we. I think my senior year, we had like. In like a thirty day span, we had twenty days under zero. Wow! I, mean, I didn't want to go outside during that. I didn't no, want to no, no, no. It's a little counter. It's a little counterproductive. Then, you know, it's like something yeah. like people will say, like you kind of get used to things. Did you ever get used to that type of cold, or is it something like that's a lie? You don't get used to it. Like it's always sucks. Oh, yeah, you, you do get used to it, but okay. now, like, so I mean, I lived there for twenty two years of my life. Got used to that. Moved to Kansas, where winter is hardly a thing for like three weeks, <laughs> and so I get pretty pampered. And then it was kind of funny during uh, Thanksgiving this last year. We got maybe like eight inches of snow, and it was cold. And I was like, God, I don't miss this one bit. 
<laughs> it's like, is, is it one thing where you start to tell your family like hey no no no, come to kansas i don't want to come to south dakota come to well, kansas do all the holidays here it's easier for them to come here because i mean i got a one-year-old they got to take back they, <laughs> right good it's reason, way too. easier for them to hop in a car than me oh, the great well how long of a car drive is that uh to where my wife and i are from is about seven seven and a half hours all right well terrible it's not bad that's that's yeah probably it's not, in the ass one-year-old like a one-year-old one-year-old stuff. Stuff. that now becomes a 14-hour ride with the one-year-old because you got to <laughs> yeah. stop every like they took a crap they have to eat did they throw up I mean, like, yeah, no. we've been like experimenting machine. we've been experimenting like driving at night waking up early in the morning driving there you know try and get her right after she eats maybe she'll take a nap You'll experience a lot as it as it progresses, and, and what you'll works, try so many things. Yeah. And what works for a little bit will stop working as they hit another phase. Like yeah. you'll be like, "Oh, we got it." Then all of a sudden, you'll do something, and you'll be like, "Well, that was the most miserable ride of my life." <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or, and right. what works for one might not work for for the other. If, yeah. if that's in your plans, you know, down the yeah. future, a yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, the the track and field show became the parenting show. Any future? There we go, guys parents out there. Yeah, or, is there any parents that want to chime in to say we're <laughs> any, give give any advice over here? You can ask three girl dads, whatever you want. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> you can give advice if you are an elder statesman and want to pass on some wisdom. We would appreciate that as well. So let's jump back into the track side. So, what have been your best memories of being? You know. You don't even have to go with just hammer and weight. Just being a thrower in general, even going back into high school with shot and disc and things like that. What yeah. have been some of your favorite memories of being a thrower? Um, kind of just like starting it all. Like it's kind of funny. I tell the story to a lot of people. It's like what got me into track is my mom threatening me to get a job or go out for track. <laughs> That'll do it, mom. I don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's so still the same mom, thing today i don't want to work either i just want to <laughs> so now mom like has no choice but to support you in the olympic dream because yeah, she's, okay. she's, she's the one that made me do it yes like, mom this is all your fault <laughs> so i ended up so i started my junior year she with that threat and uh went junior was okay uh placed like seventh in state with like a 50 foot throw it was okay. South Dakota is not the biggest state in the world. Yeah. Um, but my senior year, I ended up winning the shot put and then going on to college. So, like, winning a state title was really fun. It's a good memory. Definitely. Um, and then, like, setting, setting all the records in college was really fun as well. Like, I set our weight record – as a freshman, my second ever meet, we set our hammer record as a freshman, our first ever hammer throw in a, in a meet. That's um, awesome. I did break our shot put record. I was not a fantastic college shot putter, um, but I did break that record my senior year of college, uh, which was a 56 year old record. Were you kind wow. of chasing that too? Like you already had hammer, you had weight. Like I want that damn record. I want that to be mine. Yeah, I always knew it was pretty, like, I mean, it wasn't a crazy record. It was, like, 57 feet or something. And With a 16-pound ball. I know, listen, we talk to freaks that throw, like, 16 <laughs> plus. But with a 16-pound ball, that is throwing it really far. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I did that my, my senior year, and then my fifth year was just not great. I didn't really care about the shot put. I was, like, I have a really good chance of winning – uh, a national championship in the weight throw, uh, yeah. which I got second, so I came up a little short. But then I was like, we got to outdoor, and then I picked up the disc as well, that training. But it's kind of funny that we hardly trained. I hardly trained the shot in the disc. It was more hammer. It was like hammer three days a week, and then a pre-meet day where I'd take like 10 throws in the shot. And <laughs> <laughs> my discus training was just so ridiculously dumb did you actually spin or did you just stand yeah. <laughs> no i did i threw like uh like 162 it's pretty impressive um, yeah. just not caring <laughs> i mean i i liked the discus because it was like different from the hammer yeah i was like ah you know this is a, this is a fun one it's not really heavy it's not like really taxing on the body like the hammer and the weight 
so shop, what are, so what are, like little, yeah, what are the differences between you know for someone that's watching like a 12 is a 12 is a 12 is a 12 right the ignorant eye does not see the differences so what are the major differences between the disc obviously you're not holding something with a chain and a ball like you're kind of cupping it between like your forearm and everything but what are like some of the differences there I mean, so it depends on if you're like spinning in the shot put. So the, the spin and the shot put and the discus are similar. I'm not going to call them the same because they're not um, smaller circles, different weight. And the shot put is here, you know, pretty center body. Discus weight is out, out away from the body. Um, it's taken me a little bit to kind of learn how to coach them differently because right. you know, they're different events yeah <laughs> but i try and throw them together and i would couple guess things, that the uh, difference the same. <laughs> i would guess that the difference with the hammer is that obviously you're using two hands so you kind of spin <laughs> a little differently than than you would if you're just using one i mean again i'm not versed in the weights by any stretch um <laughs> i love watching them because i'm fascinated by them but yeah. so not all spins are the same obviously like you can't just go out there and say oh i could spin in the shot then i can go throw the, the hammer i i assume there's oh, a lot of little even, things that are much close. much different in the right it's like comparing apples to like a car or something <laughs> 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 not even close right. so, uh, you can be strong in both but right. you know um shot put and discus you want like a separation between your hips and shoulders builds tension in your core um so kind of like a rubber band effect um which can put power into the ball yep uh hammer exact opposite you want your shoulders and hips to stay together the whole time uh separation creates a break in tension with the ball so that it's not very smooth and like you're not getting power to the ball Mm -hmm. out of that uh, we can go on for hours about how to throw the hammer. I mean, but, listen, uh, I, lo I love. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm <laughs> just pumped that this is the second person that we've had on who calls it a ball on the There's professional level. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm, I'm always on coaching. It's a shot put. It's not a ball. But now that you guys have called it, I am so <laughs> feel free now to call it. Pick up the ball and throw it far. Like if if yeah. you guys can, can can call it that and and that's cool on the pro level, then I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it is a ball. Like it, 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 it is a spherical object. Yes, <laughs> it is a ball. You know, there's things like I'm watched the hammer and like the weight, and just like now being an old guy and like knowing that bending over could throw my back out. There has to be so much strain on just every muscle from the top of your back to your lower back as that thing is like going in a motion. Not is, if you do it right. <laughs> not if you do it right. Okay, so where people so that like, get hurt doing it are usually doing it wrong. Um, okay that's like uh so it's like the weight throw big big saying on instagram and the throwing world is grip and rip so like you really just try and hold on to it as hard as you can and throw it as hard as you can with your upper body and a lot of times your shoulders will start turning where your hips don't so you're like this and your hips right. are going that way yeah that, that can be and a and exactly. then your back is fucked up. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I did that one time in college when I was a freshman, and I said to myself, "Don't ever do it ever again," because it hurt a lot. Yeah, yeah. So I, I tried my hardest to really try and do it the correct way. So you want to keep your your hips and shoulders aligned at all times. Yeah, right? yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, keep them together. Keep them on top of each other, and should be. Mostly fine. There was a reason why I was never a thrower. Like I don't think I could have that amount of weight spinning around and keeping it myself in line. Like I would like like you know those like Looney Tunes where Bugs Bunny just like spins <laughs> around seven thousand times, becoming like a, a like a spring. I would become that in an absolute heartbeat. See, I was like five six and like one hundred and five pounds, so that, it kind of <laughs> threw like um they could have thrown me. Couldn't have picked it up. <laughs> oh, probably not. Well, tell you, when I first was shown how to throw it i was like hey ain't no way like <laughs> i know i know this motion and that motion right. <laughs> don't teach me anything else because i don't want to do it and then we had a volunteer hammer coach and she is i mean she coached me for five years and she's the one that told me to um gave me the blessing to go and do go move away and be a professional 
Um, but she showed me how to do it, taught me everything. I, I mean, pretty much from the start of it. And uh, so she's like, "You do it the right way. Don't do it the wrong way. You're gonna hurt yourself." And I was like, "Absolutely." Oh. So, well, so you know, um, instead of hurt yourself doing it the right way, or something, they get well, they're they're you know they're not not be as special or something. <laughs> so, can you enlighten us and our audience um, the main difference between the weight throw and the hammer? I know obviously the weight throw is heavier, um, and, and, heavier and, it's and shorter. shorter, right? So. Is there a different technique? Is it the the same spin, or do you have to like pretty much focus on each one during each season? Uh, it's pretty much the same spin, yeah. um, same turns. Obviously, shorter, heavier implement is going to kind of create quicker turns. If you want to right. look at it that way, you right. know, you don't have the Not something dragging for, for right. the ball to come through the axis, right? It's just yep. a shorter, shorter ball. Um, when I was in college, we never trained the hammer during the weight throw. And that was kind of a big mistake. The people that do throw the weight really far train the hammer right. at the same time. And they try to throw, I mean, the big saying is you can throw the, the weight like the hammer, but you can't throw the hammer like the weight. And yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's very true. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> so how much different, like, is it a notice? Like when you're throwing both, do you definitely notice the weight? difference in the weight throw versus the hammer like or does the length of the chain kind of make it feel a little same like when you're spinning probably like the first maybe one or two sessions when we get into the indoor season with the weight throw like we didn't i didn't throw it very much this year it was you know maybe 15 throws a week um with the the weight compared to the 140 we take with the hammer Wow. Um, wow. Is that all because of the weight difference? Yeah. And, you know, training the weight, like, you really don't need to. Like, if you train it like you train the hammer, if you throw the weight like you throw the hammer, you know, you're probably going to be just fine. Um, I'm sorry. My <laughs> daughter's crying in the background. And we are on a child friendly show here. Do not. I'm trying worry. to think if she's okay down there with, with my wife. She should be. But <laughs> if you need to run out there, we could always stall. Don't you worry. Yeah. It's a perfect time to put know. that up. If you have any questions for Tanner, drop it in the chat. When he gets back, he'll answer them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's okay. <laughs> um, so what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. The training, right? So yep. when I was in college, we trained. And this was just kind of my coach's um, thoughts. Like, you know, we, and the same here, like I didn't know a whole lot behind the training, you know, kind of just went with what they did. And they're like, well, you know, to be better at something, you got to do it more often, right? Yeah, definitely. And now that I've known that, that might not be the same, that might not be the right thing, you know, because we definitely felt the aches and pains of throwing the weight 50 times a week um i've passed on the knowledge to them saying yeah i maybe don't do that you know like <laughs> and they i mean they've the last two years they've you know they've, they've gotten quite a bit better um back home so i think that little tip worked out <laughs> definitely so let's talk about your uh your post collegiate journey um because now you're over at k-state as a volunteer yeah. coach, how did that all transpire? How did you get from South Dakota to now training and being a, a volunteer coach at K-State? How did that whole situation take place? Yeah, so um, one of my high school coaches, who's, who's a volunteer high school coach or whatever, he, uh, his son coached at K-State, so he knew the throws coach here pretty well. Um, and so after I had won a national championship, I was like kind of in my head, like, you know, kind of wondering if maybe I should keep throwing or what, you know, I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was ready to stop. Um, but he texted me one day and he's like, Hey, you know, if you're wanting to keep throwing, uh, reach out to coach Watson down at K state, you know, he's a great hammer coach and great person in general. Um, so I sent out a couple emails and uh, we went back and forth, had a couple conversations and he was like, you know, uh, usually don't take post-collegiate throwers, um, but I do need a volunteer coach. 
Um, so if you'd be willing to come and, you know, help me out, I'll help you out by coaching you. And so going on my second year here now, I've, you know, enjoyed it for, you know, two years, almost two years. <laughs> it's pretty, so, I like, I like it down here. It's, it's nice. Awesome. <laughs> we have really great facilities. We just have this new indoor facility, which, I mean, where we throw the hammer in this indoor facility is probably one of the best setups in the nation, maybe even the world. Awesome. I don't know. For sure in the nation. That's awesome. That's great. So how do you find time to coach and train? Is that something that has to be like specifically planned out or do you just kind of like coach and then train when you can or like does one of them take up more time or are they pretty much evenly um, distributed? They both take up a good amount of time. So we train we train hammer in the morning with the hammer crew, the other hammer throwers. So there's there's me, there's Justin, there's another uh, post collegiate guy that competed for uh, um, Coach Watson when he was at LSU. His name's John Nerdall. And so it's like us three, and then the KSU hammer throwers. Um, so we train that in the morning, and then we lift right after we throw. And the college hammer throwers lift at like four every day. Um, so we train in the morning, lift in the morning, go home, eat come back around like one to, to help coach shot and disc and everything. And then lift up coach lifting at four and whatever, stay till six. So it does take up a lot of day, but and we have a good break in between me, like two hour break in between to eat lunch and watch Netflix or something. <laughs> that just sounds, you know, it sounds, it sounds tough. And it sounds like we talk all the time. Like, you know, you're a pro. You're one of the best throwers in the country. The fact that you have to like scrape by, volunteer coach, hopefully find yeah. a, you know, be lucky enough that you have a good coach, a great individual. K State's willing to take you on. Like, right. this should not have to be your life as one of the best throwers in the country. And just hearing your story, like the grind is amazing. And anyone listening right now that may be a young athlete, like take notes on a bunch of the athletes we've had on the trackstar.me Olympic dream series and individuals like Tanner who, and you know, and kudos to your wife for yeah. letting you grind and working your ass off <laughs> and chasing your dreams because it, you know, it's a lot, it is a lot. It's and so has there been tough moments um, where you're there and you're just like, Screw man, I, I know you said you don't want to get to work, but like moments where you're saying like, man, what am I doing? Like, should I just go to work? Like what's going on here? Like, are there some moments where you get down and then you got to pick yourself back up? Or are you just full send focus, get to the Olympics, make some money, be the best in the world? Uh, it's like half and half. I mean, like I, I do work. Like I do have a, I am a bartender <laughs> part time. Um, <laughs> Figured you so did. like I do, I do work. I do get paid to work three days a week. There you um, go. So I mean, that uh, does help. Um, I also have, Two sponsorships from back home, Love um, a bank that we've been with for over 15 years, and then uh, a beef company that my neighbor owns. Um, nice. So I get some beef from them. Uh, the bank gave me a, uh, they gave me like a little two year contract. And they gave me a certain amount for two years, and uh, if it wasn't for them, like this, I don't know if I would be still in Kansas right now um, for what they've given me is, you know, that that's paid for, you know, basically every trip I took last year was paid for by them. Um, wow. And this year as well, along with uh, prize money from indoors last year and prize money from indoor this year. And that beef deal is no small thing, considering the price of meat and being at the road. <laughs> you know, I'm not even kidding though, because yeah. being you, you want to the ribeyes I'm getting because you want to mow through protein, like you want to have a lot of protein, especially with lifting and things like that. Yeah. And the fact that you're like, I imagine every once in a while you still have, still have to go to the supermarket get some different cuts. We do, for the yeah. most part, you have a bunch of meat coming to you on a consistent basis that you can eat. Like that is what you're saving hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year. Like it so, really is bad out here <laughs> yeah. we, so we I mean, don't get i mean we don't get like a bunch of beef we get a, a box every month that has nice. anywhere from like i think well once or twice a month i think the last box i got was 
four ribeyes, four T-bones, and like 10 pounds of ground beef. That's awesome. <laughs> I and the ribeyes, I mean, the ribeyes are as big as my hand. Oh, nice. send me some. <laughs> I want it. And then uh, another good thing is my wife's, my wife's dad as a cattle farmer so he also gives us some beef every That's now amazing. and then so <laughs> you we are up. saving money on buying tanner is well fed yes i'm 285 pounds <laughs> i am well fed. <laughs> so this is a good way to transition into our spiel with our sponsors real quick because we don't have any yet but if you would like to sponsor us we have our our stipulation we'll be happy to take your sponsorship money, but you also have to sponsor an athlete that we've had on the show that does not have any sponsors or that doesn't have, you know, a lucrative one. So Tanner, you would be someone that if we got someone who's like, Hey, we want to throw a bunch of money at you. We'd be like, Hey, throw a bunch of money at Tanner too. Like cause we are trying to get you guys. Yeah. There's too many talented individuals that don't have any sponsorship money or very, you know, light sponsorship money that, you know, you guys should be getting taken care of. So yes, if you're interested in being a sponsor, we'd be happy to talk to you, but just be prepared to take care of one of our former athletes on the show that we've had. Yeah, of course. Well. So would, would you be able to do what you're doing if it wasn't for the volunteer coaching at K state, like being able to use their facilities and their weight room i mean those are things that as a pro i, I would imagine you'd have to contract out right you'd have to get a coach you'd have to find somewhere to work out like the fact that you're there really sounds like it's very beneficial for where you are right now yeah. in your career i'd say probably not like i don't think coach watson would have us here training if we weren't also helping us him out like Which I want to say, sense. I want to say yes. He's a great person. He is. He is. He's amazing. What I'd he's imagine done, insurance. What he's, me, what he's done for Justin. What he's done for all these college athletes. He is really good. I'd imagine really insurance good. wise, it's easier to be like, hey, you guys can come throw these heavy things at risk of injury while being a coach. Like that's got to be the yeah. school probably would probably prefer that as well as a setup. Yeah, and you know, it's another thing is like so. Like I was saying, he's he's a great guy. Um, but I would think that maybe he wouldn't want us here if we weren't. You're right. You know, we'd be like taking time away from him. You brought um, freeloaders in his, in his life, <laughs> right? So he's like, ah, you know, you guys have to give me something in return, which of you course, know, I fully understand. It's, I would do the same thing if I was him. You know, like, good I'm old gonna, barter system. Yeah. yeah, I think it's great. So, what are your um, being an Olympic year? What are your goals and what are you like? Are you doing anything different? Hold on, hold on. Before we get All to right, that, we're going to wait. Gotta, okay. the golden question. How the hell are you pro in in weight? Yes. Not pro in hammer. Yeah. How does one become pro in one and, and amateur in? I don't want to get to the aspirations before we find out. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, the simple answer is money, right? I've made money throwing the weight. I've not made money throwing the hammer. That is very um, So I got eighth. I got eighth at USA's last year. And they only pay top seven. Oh, so God. I made the final, got my six throws, but I didn't get any money. See, that's a uh, part of my French. That's fucking embarrassing. If you make a final, you should get paid. Like is are, very, that is a joke. But he's got he's, beef. He's got beef. I do got beef. I got beef with everybody. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that who we are? Except for Justin. All right, do you fight Justin at that uh, practice? <laughs> so no, nah, it probably wouldn't be a good luck for that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, are there, so are there any so it's only money right oh that's the only reason yeah, why because you I haven't mean, made you haven't placed high enough or, or whatever in the hammer so the, it's it's that close to being pro and amateur like like it sounds yeah. like it's kind of like semantics I mean, in the that's how coach watson explained it he's like you know uh you can't call yourself a pro unless you've made money doing it um, I mean, that makes sense. Which is a very good goal, too, though. I mean, like, that'll keep you hungry. But you're a pro thrower. Yeah. Like, you, you could just yeah. say, I am a pro thrower. Like, like if you don't have to call it a pro thrower, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is there any benefit or extra benefit that comes with being a pro, like having that label? Or is it just something where it's just you made money doing it? Um, I guess it depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> if you're, like, trying to talk to a company that's, you know, you're trying to get some money from you're like, hey, uh, I'm a, a professional hammer thrower. You know, uh, got seventh at USA's. I didn't do that, but <laughs> <laughs> this year, hopefully, higher than seven, higher than eight for sure. Uh -huh. um, but you know, that does help. Like, you know, some people might not have that that 
thought of, oh, they didn't make any money. They're not a pro. You know, I, I, I would have to say that if you're going to like these big meets, like the pro meets, <laughs> like this, like on the world athletic uh, continental tour meets, right. If you're getting to those, you should be considered a pro throw. Especially because like anyone could try to get to those meets, but they'll look at your marks and be like, yeah, no, you're not coming. But yeah, someone that they look at your marks and they're like, absolutely. We'd love to have yeah. you like that. If you're, get, if you're getting into a meet based off of what you've performance. From, yeah. You, yeah, you should yeah be able to call yourself that i 100 now it has to be a high enough mark you know if they said oh here's a 62 meter line uh anybody that's thrown over 62 in the hammer can do that 62 is an okay throw uh not for a want to be professional uh right. it's kind of dog shit <laughs> but well, I feel like that could be like, you know, this is where, you know, me and Dave have talked. We talked last week about Michael Johnson's league, about how he put it seems like he may want to make a line of demarcation of only pros being in his league. And that could be a good way of separating it. Have you participated in a Michael Johnson's league yet? He only has pros. If you're invited to his league, you're a pro. If not, good luck. Like, I guess, because, like, you know, obviously the individuals at the Diamond League are pros. Like, they're not going to say they're not pros, whether or not they yeah. win or not. Being invited there is incredible. I'm sure yeah, that high school pros. kids run at some Diamond League meets, especially the Prefontaine Classic, you know? They, but they have their own division most of the time. Sometimes they'll run against the pros, but most of the time they have their like own like high school mile. It depends on, you know, I remember like like Alan Webb running pro mile, ran at 353, you know? Yeah, yeah, you have them in there. But I'm, like I said, I'm curious with the way Michael Johnson's thing works. And so I'm wondering with like the ATL league, did you ever consider going over to the American track league and competing over there when they were, are they, are they still doing, I don't know if the ATL is still going on. I, I think, think they're, they're still around. I think they're still was, doing it. That was when I was still in college. So I didn't even really look into that. And I don't think they really did much with the hammer throw. No, I think, I think it was more, knowledge. more, more track stuff. I think. Yeah. yeah. I know they had like a couple of shop with competitions, but That's um, a bolt too, I think, but, there was one last year that was trying to start up. It was like the TFL or something. Hmm. Or I didn't uh, even hear about it. it this is the they, thing too, it was, it was right. way too good to be true. They were talking like you could get paid money to show up to these meets. You get paid money to place top five at these meets. Oh, you mean like a professional meet? Where professionals get paid to be professionals? Here it is. Yeah, exactly. But TFL Pro not, Track and Field League. Yes. Is it still a thing? Uh, no, it's, <laughs> I don't think so. Way. They would have to. But it had teams to, though, well, like that. like it had teams from like different regions. There was yeah, a there was eight eight teams. Maybe there was a yeah. draft. So it's a cool concept. Yeah, it just didn't take off. But so like they it actually has actually a draft like and the, teams and they did the whole draft and everything. And then they're like, hey, well, we're still working on information for meets. Um, but they had like coaches for the teams, they had the draft of the teams and they had these like outrageous number, like for, uh, well, yeah, money. He, here it is here. It says a uh, $4,000 appearance Wait, where, fee. Where did you yeah. find this What's the website? We can get it up here. Where is that? TFLpro.us. It's got a $4,000 appearance, $5,000 first place, $3,000 second, one thousand third, and one thousand dollars if your team wins. So what? what and then yeah, in so the semifinals, you can go to a meet and make ten thousand dollars. Pretty. You can make ten thousand dollars if you just appear in the finals. Oh, and another ten grand. This is what you're you talking win. about right here. Is this what yes. it was? Yes. Yeah. It is so they had the Alabama Freedom, Illinois Justice, Virginia, Kentucky. I mean, keep it warm. I understand that. So is this uh, this needs to be a thing? What the hell? <laughs> I want yeah, this. This is so the first that I've heard to twenty twenty one. Okay, look at draft. Here's, the, here's a draft. I think I got drafted in like the fourth round or something. Did you? Hillary Bohr's there. Yeah, like Rogers is there. Will London? There's some names here too. So yeah. you got drafted in the fourth round. Let's see. Let's see if we Maybe can get the third, or third or fourth. Third. Let's see. So was this something where like do you have an agent for this and do they call you and let you know or did you just get a phone call? No, they put us all on an email or like, hey, you guys should sign up for this. Um, and I did talk with like the when after you got drafted, whatever, whatever. You did get to talk with the the coach of the team. But that like there's one I part of that website that says, well, I mean, you're going over like the prize money and the appearance stuff. Yeah. Like, you can just go to, if you go to a yeah. meet and win, right? They pay for your travel. Yeah. They give you a $4,000 appearance fee. You 
bonus if your team wins, bonus if you get first place or whatever. I mean, it was like twelve grand. Yeah, right no, it, yeah, yeah. I I saw it early. It was under. Uh, where was it under? Maybe athletes. It might be under uh, athlete. Yeah, the athlete obligation. Yeah. Do, 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 I mean, but I give weeks. you guys. I give you guys one guess as to why that didn't work out. Because the money wasn't actually there. <laughs> oh, bingo! <laughs> so regular well, season, yeah. like this is a it's great like idea. Million dollars. Yeah, like we've actually talked about some of these things. Something I, exactly I, like this. You know what though? But it's a shame that you and I, who follow track, didn't even hear this. I mean, and maybe that's my maybe fault. That's why? Maybe, maybe I, I didn't look deep enough, but I shouldn't have to. If there was any new league in any other sport coming out. We would know about it. So I would love. I, the, the, we got to look. Kevin M. Stefan, if you are Kevin M. Stefan, if you're available, let's jump on. I would love to talk to you because this is a great idea. And I wish we could figure out a way to get this going. Because yeah. this is an awesome idea. And this is something it that would, would be great. It would work out great um, if they had like the lower payouts, right? So like they don't need to pay you twelve thousand right. dollars to go to one meet, right? Yeah, they could be like, hey, you know, we'll we'll pay for your travel, um, and then if you get first, here's five hundred bucks, thousand dollars. Yeah, or it's under and athletes. The, the uh, right scale back, of, uh, pay. scale back, back those pays, scale back those pays, have more meets, and like, well, make what it if to they even like say you got afford. drafted? And coach talks to you and there's like a GM or someone in the league and says, hey, we're going to sign you to this contract. You need to show up to X amount of meets this season. Like, you know, and that's what it was, too. Like, like they did have a lot of contract and pay you there. They did want you to show up to like, I think it was like the main kind of call. They were like, hey, these are the dates, you know, we have planned. Uh, make sure you're free. You know, like we need you guys here. You're like you guys are a part of this. You know, we really don't want you to not show up to this. And I feel like that, like it would have been better if like they had like a contract structure per round instead of all like the payout money. Right. Like whatever round you got drafted in, this is the contract. So first round yeah. here, we're going to give you guys twenty k to be here. Second round, and there was a yeah. bonus. There is draft bonuses. Whatever round you got drafted yeah, this, in, this draft was back in twenty twenty one. Look, Eric Holt got <laughs> drafted thirty fourth overall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be. But that's the type of league that we need. It's a non-diamond league, but you're all pros. You're all fantastic athletes. You're all Olympic hopefuls. Like everyone on that list is in the vying or wanting to get to the Olympics, wanting yeah. to, and some ability. Like, you know, if like USATF, you know, kind of got a, something going, something on like that, or like whoever was trying to do the TFL stuff, you know, got with one of the big track companies. They're like, yeah. hey, listen, you guys want to be you want to have track like they do in Europe, in the U.S. These companies are like, oh, you know, we're, you know, we're making money off of Europe, so I don't know. Right. I mean, and the thing is too, like, <laughs> this was back in 2021. Yeah, yeah, it's been a little bit, and I wonder how much. Um, That's COVID. <laughs> I wonder how much like post-COVID stuff did to it too, and things like that, right in the middle of it, like, and if that hurt the funding, if they had something there, and it was like, hey, we can't do this anymore. I'm like, sure it didn't help. No. It, yeah, it might have screwed up because they, I mean, they, who knows if they're telling the truth and all that stuff, but they said they had somebody that was. I feel like there's been a lot. That. I feel like there's been a lot of leagues that have tried to start and there's a, there's some hype and then it just, for whatever happens, it just never comes to fruition. Well, That's why I'm hoping that Michael Johnson, because he has cachet, he has money, he has really good yeah. partners in this, that hopefully this yeah. whole thing can kind of take off and we can get some sort of pro league where you guys can have great competition here in the States and, and not have to travel. Cause for someone like yourself, it's, it's, it might not even be possible to go to Europe. It's so much money. Yeah. It is. It's crazy. I mean, like, no, it's not. um, Justin and I, I mean, Justin reached out to, I don't know, a thousand of people. <laughs> it is, uh, it's kind of fun. If you, I don't know if he brought it up. Um, but when he first got to Kansas, his main, focus was finding funding for uh um for this season whatever and yeah he was like i just, he was just really trying not to get a job i think everyone's dream <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know what though but I, I don't blame him you guys are pro throwers you shouldn't have to get another damn job 100 yeah. percent. you should be able to focus on that that is your job we're yeah among the eight best hammer throwers in the country uh yeah 
That, you know, is, to some people, that doesn't mean shit, but to us, it means something. I mean, to track you nerds like us, it means a lot. Like, yeah. us, we are like, it, it might not, it's weird, but like, we are privileged to have you on. You are one of the <laughs> best athletes in the country. 100%. Like, there's like bar none. You're one of the best athletes in the country, and you're sitting here talking, like, yeah, I got a bar 10. I am a week. Yeah. I got a bank for sponsorships. Like, it's nonsense. It's like, I just, I hope, I just worked a six hour shift yesterday. Sorry. <laughs> and I hope yeah, one listen. of the things that we get across, like, through the series, that we're doing and through the things that we do here is the absurdity of professional athletes having to go through what you guys go through because i think like the exactly. one main running theme that we have had with having everyone with the trackstar.me olympic dream series is the absurdity of it all that you know some of you guys like you're trying to feed a family and that's not easy to do when you're working a regular nine to five, right? And, but you're here trying to chase your dreams and it's not easy. So real quick, before we jump into anything else, gonna give this a plug. Um, we talked about a little bit, the Olympic Dreams uh, Give Send Go. Um, it's the series, it's the Give Send Go that Tanner is a part of, that, you know, Capers we had last week, we had Jordan on, um, you know, www. Justin, at, what's up? Justin Stafford, not Justin, a Jordan. Jordan, yeah, not Jordan, guys. Sorry, Justin Stafford. I'm, I'm mixing up my throwers now. But um, www.givesengo.com slash GBKDF. Uh, like I said last week with Capers, I don't care how much you can donate. Give something. If you are yeah. a fan of running, if you're a fan of pros, uh, if you want to see these individuals that you're hearing succeed, be able to go places, go to new meets, go do great things, uh, give anything you can. Just give something because they deserve it. The pros, damn it, they deserve it. So, um, Tanner, anything you want to say on that note about the gifts and go and anything like that? I think you got it covered. Um, there you go. <laughs> you know, I just really appreciate anybody that does send anything, you know. Yeah, definitely. every bit helps, <laughs> absolutely. A hundred percent. So, we want to, so I mean, just a little bit to upgrade a seat, you know, on the airplane. Yes. There you go. Thanks go for it. Big guy like you needs needs that bigger seat. You know, that eggs row is great. That, that, yeah. Absolutely. I we'll did, that. When we when I went to <laughs> indoors this year to to Albuquerque, I did get upgraded to a first class seat. Hey, from Manhattan to Dallas. Sadly, it's a forty minute flight, but hey, it was, it was a great forty minutes. It was awesome. a great forty minutes. You can stretch your legs out. Like, wide. Uh, it was great. That that is fantastic. So back to what Dave said. Early on with his question, I'm going to steal. Yeah, I, I jumped the gun there. But yeah, no, that's fine. So um, right now, obviously, the goal is to get to Paris 2024, right? That is eyes on the prize, become a part of the Olympic team. Past Paris, what is your goal? Um, I do want to throw for as long as I feel like I can be competitive, right? You know, if I can't to get through this year and I'm just like oh man I just don't know how much more I could do um, if I felt like I did everything I could and nothing really went the way it, I thought it should have yeah. who knows um, in the future uh, so I didn't I went to college not really knowing what I wanted to do but I got a degree uh, I kind of wanted to be a strength conditioning coach and I did two internships and I was like eh Unfortunately, this was after I graduated. Okay. <laughs> I, was like, oh, I don't really, I don't really fucking like this very much. <laughs> Waking up at four thirty to yell at kids about their squad depth. Um, yeah, you got to be in there before they are and have the plan. Yep. Be team with their own. It's a lot. So I really didn't know what I wanted to do, and then when I came down here, started coaching and stuff, and I was like, yeah, I, you know, I don't mind it. Like it's pretty fun to do all this and you know kind of talk with coach watson about it and he's like yeah you know something you get into so if you want to get into you know i could certainly help you um get there you know like as long as you care about it and want to do it so i think that is kind of the the goal at some point is to be a throws coach at a you know hopefully at a d1 um, program because that's where the money's at but so you know, it's not all about money Right. So can so can we get you to stay poor and start a professional throwing team? Because I think that would go so <laughs> far poor. for athletes like yeah, stay but poor. For, you know, for athletes like you, there's words of encouragement. And, and, yeah, but for athletes like you who are Pretty sitting there, it's like that you don't. Yeah, it's easy for me, right? That um, you know, so you don't have to go to a college, right? So that there is a place that it's like okay, and I know 
Um, I think Justin said that there's pockets, right? There are some throwing professional throwing like teams and pockets around the country, but it's like, I feel like we need more. And I feel like it would be such a good thing for someone like yourself who has coaching experience now is learning from a fantastic coach, uh, throwing coach to sit there and be like, Hey, I was professional. I was X in the country. Like if you're coming out of college, you want to be a pro come work with me. And again, it will be a grind because we would need people to sit there and support you and, you know, allow you to use facilities and yeah. things like that. I feel well, like yeah, that, more that's that. the big thing is the big thing is the whole facilities thing. Like a hundred percent facilities and implements like that's that's not cheap yeah. um, i mean just coaching, ju- coaching just is cheap price- i'm not a great coach but <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> just the price of a hammer cage is immense oh the like cheap ones are like forty thousand dollars all right cheap right uh, yeah the, the cheap okay. shitty ones are forty right are, are still 40 grand which is a ton of money yeah i wonder what that facility the z athlete uh, village in vegas if they would like let pro teams go and like work out there like if there were like pro teams that could be there because did you hear about that the Z Athlete Village in Vegas. There's an indoor facility that has a 400 meter indoor track with a 200 meter in- indoor track in between it that's banked mm-hmm. on the infield. But also, full field facilities around and everything like that. And it's supposed to be like this mega indoor project. Now, we're working on, I've, I've had to email things. We're trying to get somebody to come on from there to talk to us about it. But it, it seems like something that would be really cool to sit there and like try and market. Like, hey, you have this whole thing going on. Why don't we have some pro sports teams come out of here? It's all track. Like, let's do this. <laughs> Could you guys give me a second? I'm gonna go check. Yeah, on. yeah. No, yo, go ahead and check on it. We'll yeah, we'll talk. So. <laughs> of course, man. So Tanner had to jump out for a second, but man, you know, I, we harp on it all the time. But you know, I'm gonna throw it up again. The give send go. Yeah, I'm not begging people. Uh, you know, no. if you could do what you got to do, and anybody that's watching right now, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you all. Uh, send some questions for Tanner when he comes back and things like that. But please, if you can, five dollars, ten dollars. I mean, it's not for us. It's not going to me and Dave. We have not taken this at all. This is going towards every athlete that you have seen a part of this series, and uh, you know they are fantastic athletes. They're Awesome also, people. It's their chance. Their their chance to be able to shine and give themselves the best opportunity to do that as pro athletes from other countries certainly have the capability of fulfilling their dreams. Our athletes here too. And, and you know, be able to ha- have yeah. that same goal. And one of the things that I just want anyone watching to take away from, like the commonality between Justin, between Capers, between Tanner is they're doing this because they love it. They're doing this because, you know, not only are they extremely talented at it, at it, but in order, especially like we talk to runners and stuff and runners, it's hard, but it's so much easier for runners to grab a sponsor. It is not, you know, it's a lot easier. We, you know, I mean, talk to Eric Holt about that. He'd probably want to kick me in the face. Yeah. But it is, you know, there are more out there for runners than there is for throwers. So in order to be a thrower, continuing doing it the way, you know, Tanner Capers, Jordan, and you'll hear some for some more uh, from some more that are here, definitely go out. Please, you know, support them because they deserve it. Tanner's back. All well? Uh, no, she is not having fun down there. <laughs> Um, imagine. So here's the thing. We will we'll talk a little bit more. We'll let you go well, fairly soon so you don't get in trouble. She you know, I mean she's got ear infection and croup, whatever that is. Croup sucks. Croup, listen, yeah, yeah, the worst part about croup is that cough sounds like they are about to like hawk up a lung, but there's like nothing you could do about it. Right. Yeah. It's it's like I feel like it's like strep throat for us. It's almost harder on the parents. Oh, it is. In a sense, you know, she was coughing a bunch earlier, and I was like, ah, yep. oh, you know, just need to drink something. But she's yeah. one. She doesn't really understand that. And, and that doesn't actually do. You might not want milk. milk. <laughs> yeah. 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 And there's yeah. no cough medicine for a one year old. No. It's all starts nope. to like six and up. It's no like it. So, yeah, you just kind of got to tough that out. So, so we talked a little bit about your aspirations. You want to be a pro. We talked about the athlete village a little bit. So, you want to stay in the sport, you want to coach. Is it something like you got a taste for it now and you just enjoy it? And are you trying to pick Coach Watson's brain now more and more about throwing and coaching and watching him to try and get yourself ready for that level? Yeah. I mean, we I'm with him every day um, in the afternoons for shot and disc. And um, the amount, I mean, the amount I've learned in the last year and a half, two years is is insane. Like I, I always thought I knew – 
a lot about throwing from college, but now I didn't realize I didn't know anything. Well, you know, and, and also like, I can probably throw further now than I could in college and like the shot and disc and I have not trained right. them at all. <laughs> well, and you know, like, you know, you're also realizing that coaching is not just how much you know, it's how can you relay that information to the athletes? And yeah. Yeah. You have to learn like, that not that one technique might not work with every athlete, and you have to kind of get to know everybody and and mold yourself into different types of coaches for different types of yeah. athletes. And I feel like the good thing now, like with me still like fresh out of pretty much fresh out of college, like doing all that and still throwing is I can ex- explain it a little differently yeah, right. um, to like the athlete mind, you know. Um, Coach Watson, yes, he's, he knows everything. He knows. Well, I mean, he knows what he's coaching, and what he's saying is is right. Right. But like the way I understand it, what he's saying is like maybe sometimes that that'll help the athlete a little better. Yeah, yeah but you like, know, but he also probably coaches you guys in his pro group differently than he coaches his collegiate kids. Yeah, I, I'd say, I mean, I'd say it's pretty similar, but there, I mean, there is a couple different, a couple differences, um, especially for the newer, like the freshmen and sophomores that come in. That so my question for you, the with the freshmen and sophomores, how many of them have you gotten some of the really good high school kids that you have to break? Yeah, like some of the ones that come in, think they know their shit, like they're, they were good, they maybe won state or placed in state, and they're awesome, and you're sitting there and you watch their form, and you're just like, yeah, no. Like, I settle down. Know. Like, And then they're sitting there trying to like, no, but I did this, coach it. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. Say now, you're um, the one, like, major haven't, program, like. <laughs> haven't, had, haven't had that happen yet. Um, That's good. It'll so happen. So we do, <laughs> like, obviously, we do try and uh, recruit kids that threw the hammer and the javelin along with the shot and disc in, college, in high school. Um, but I feel like it's it's hard to do that because, like, hammer's not a big thing in no, high school. No. Like, there's club sports that do it. And, like, you know, there's multiple states that throw the javelin and stuff. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I was saying earlier, they're, they're different athletes. <laughs> I, yeah, you completely, I don't you, it's almost like that. a completely different event. Like, like it should have its yeah. its own little I mean, category. You go look at, go look at, like, hammer training, chopper training, discus training. You know, that's, like – like strength training is similar. Is they're similar. Model, there's right? some different intricacies, but they're similar. But but you go look at like how some of these javelin throwers are trained is like it's almost like CrossFit mixed with right. like throwing weighted it's, it's completely tennis different. balls and baseballs and I mean it's just way different than anything than the other three throwing events. So can you watch a, like a freshman come in and throw a shot and disc and just look at them and be like, you're going to throw the hammer. Like similar to the way your coach just put the weight in your hand and was like, this is what you're doing. Like, do you see that? Like you'll see an athlete throw it and be like, so you're not going to throw the shot in college. We're going to put a, a weight in your hand. Like, can you see that or do they have to show you interest? Um, I think we definitely try and have them try it. Okay. Right. You know, you definitely go through the first couple weeks of, Hey, like, this is new. We're going to try it, see if it catches on. And if it doesn't, you know, like, you know, the really good shot and discus throwers that, that you can get out of high school, you know, it's, it might not be worth your time trying to train the hammer and the weight because you've got two other events that are right. taking up a lot of time that they're probably going to be good at. Now you do get those guys that are crazy in the shot. Oh, like the Ole Miss kid, uh, Tarek, yeah, twenty one meter shot putter, twenty three in the weight, seventy two in the hammer. Yeah, yeah. Like those aren't those aren't everyday stats, you know. Those, no, those no, are, those are monstrous. <laughs> you can't go to you can't go to every state and find one of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, you'd like to. Yeah, absolutely, it'd be nice, right? If you can get them. also for these teams to afford that, I don't, I don't know. Hey, listen, they somehow that's, do what they could do, right? Well, listen, that's why and they would love getting has changed. <laughs> NIL has changed that whole thing. Oh, I, I, oh I, yeah. I, I was looking at it uh, today. Uh, Nico Young just got money in IL, you know, and so if he wants to stay at, at Northern Arizona and run, he can, yeah. you know, he's now he's, he's, he got money from Adidas, but if he doesn't want to, which I think he, he's planning on, on leaving, he has a sponsor. It, it's crazy. How, how this I don't whole know. Thing what's works. the motivation to go pro? Like, honestly, like if you're a runner, and you're getting NIL money right now. 
and that's guaranteed money to just cool. be in college and exist and compete. Why yeah. go pro? Because <laughs> you have because you can create your 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 own schedule. You don't you're not bound to go to meets because your team's going. So you, think you can Nick train more. Bound to race at any meet that he doesn't want to race at right now. No, but I'm, I'm but I'm talking about like in general. Like <laughs> yeah, you yeah. you are you control where you go. Like, like you're not like I have to run three events at this meet for team. You know, like you're you're your own person you you I train guess. for yourself i think in college if you get that nil money you can kind of do whatever the hell you want you become the golden goose of your campus well i mean like the, the, the track team especially listen caitlin clark <laughs> turned down <laughs> yeah i mean someone like you have to go to class yeah yeah yeah, yeah i mean class you know like but like someone like everything about college <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> look at like a uh, caitlin clark in basketball she's turned down money to go pro she which would have made more nil than she is, is going to the WNBA, which is which is a nonsense decision her dad needed to yell at her not for talking trash but for not taking that nil deal to yeah. not go and make like 400 not even like forty thousand dollars in WNBA. but i digress wouldn't, wouldn't she still keep these sponsors she's got I mean, she I mean, get sponsorship as, I think she just wants to say that that she's pro. I get that, you know. Yeah, and everybody does. Yeah, right. and, 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 that's, and, and that's, the, that's the goal. I guarantee Caitlin you know? Clark. This people already came to her and said, "Yeah, go become a pro, and we'll pay you X as a sponsor. She'll make money. Yeah, it's, she'll be fine there with sponsors." Well, I wouldn't doubt that Nike would be like, "Hey, here you go." I mean, the Sabrina shoes are doing really well. Sabrina Ionescu is they're some yeah. of the biggest basketball shoes. Caitlin Clark could definitely get some Steph Curry treatment. Oh, so for sure. But anyway, but but the point is, is that <laughs> is that we're we're talking about all these people in college who aren't even yeah. pro yet, and they're already set. Meanwhile, we have these amazing athletes in yes. our sport yes. who get screwed over because. It's just so frustrating. So we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that one show at a time, and we are going to keep knocking on the door and making sure people hear it. So, Tanner, before I let you go and help your lovely wife and your your daughter, we're going to ask you the question that we ask all of our guests. And, Dave, we're not going to give him any hints. You love to try and give hints. All right. Not doing that this time. But... So we've talked a lot about, you know, what you're doing, how hard of a grind it is for you. If you could have a magic wand and if you could make a change to the sport of track and field in order to attract the casual fans to get you guys, pro athletes, paid the way you should as professional athletes, what would you change? Or add or do or et cetera. I know it's a loaded question. It's a lot. Um, (laughs) Okay. I think... It's a one party question. You said how do you how would you get fans to pay attention to our sport? Casual fans. Casual like people fans. who who don't who don't know really much about it. How do we get them hooked? You aren't going to find it on Peacock or paying for freaking run <laughs> things like that. Like, like, yeah. Okay, so I'm not a basketball fan, but I'll watch March Madness, right? Right. I think the same thing is like tr- uh, track in the Olympics. Like people might not be a track fan, but they'll watch the Olympics. hundred percent. Now what I and many people have probably said this, they need to get the normal average person, like to give them like a month or something. They just do like a draft. You get like called out of the office, be like, Oh, you're selected. You got to go compete against these athletes in the Olympics. And they're like, like the pros versus Joe's type of thing. So you can show how hard this shit actually is. Right. And I think, yeah, pros versus Joe's. That's, that's a great show. I remember that. It was, it was great. And they need so, to bring it back. So we <laughs> didn't see, know. I'd love to see Derrick Henry, you know, stiff arm uh, some listen. dude named Mark from the office. <laughs> so Kurt <laughs> Angle just throwing people around that. Door. <laughs> exactly. so, oh, Tanner, we had no idea that you and Justin were at K-State together. I had no idea. But the thing is, our idea that Dave and I both gave to Justin is, and I think he should take it, and you guys should, you guys should walk around town filming each other just grabbing things out of people's hands and freaking launching it That's and just dumb. throwing it far and just throw it on tiktok yeah. throw it on youtube and just be like and then just like hand them like a shot put and be like yes. we just do your thing that far this is what we throw and we or, throw or challenge thing. people to a shot put throw off you know and and, and put it on, on yeah go find media. some like brocky dudes over on like go to like a beach site case the football team and just house them just oh yeah just, wait, no the well, thing is like we yeah. just go to go to the like the football practice or the basketball practice yeah. and be like hey try this one yeah you know you do, this one, we'll do, you do this one we'll do yours yeah. and then i'm not going to do theirs because i can't shoot a basketball so <laughs> but but yo but 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 it's we do need things like that to create buzz more than every four years you know i would be great social yeah. media. Actually, it that would be 
present that to your team because that would be awesome. Just have your team go to K State, which is K State football, K State basketball, our big time programs. Go to them and do like I'll be a social media thing, like talk to the social media people <laughs> and just sit there and be like, this is what we want to make our hype thing. And just have them go up to them and like give them the rubber shot put and be like, here, the biggest one, like get like your centers and, and power forwards and be like, here, throw it. Let's see how far you could do it. And then we'll do yeah, it. Yeah. And then yeah, just here. Have them each like, <laughs> try it and show and like put that on social media and for football same thing or have like some of your sprinters go up and be like all right you db you run a four a four four i run a four two let's just test this like yeah i think that'll be fun and that'll be good like press and i feel like that would make waves if k-state went and did it and then you could inspire yeah, like, you know a lot of some of these sec schools to go and just torch their freaking teams that'll be great too <laughs> but again like it's it's a shame that that has to be you know, that's that's what bothers me. But, yeah. you know, but, you know, like when you see people making so much money from just being on social media, why not? Well, like I was yeah. at the uh, the uh, American Dreams Mall this weekend and my daughter's want to go to Mr. Beast Burgers. I mean, that guy's million dollars just for making YouTube videos, you know, but I it's mean, like he gives away a lot of money, too. <laughs> he does. No, he's a generous dude. Yeah, he, he, he like he, every video he makes cost him over a million dollars. So when he yeah. makes like two million, he only made one. Like, <laughs> like that. it's a million bucks, but he puts out a ton of money in order. He does. And he gives out money to people, too. But my ultimate goal, I just want to see Tanner and Jordan go take people's like cell phones and watch them. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny, yeah. That's Tanner, while Justin, while they're I, keep on, I keep on Justin Jordan. Justin, come fight me. Um, you could beat me up. I keep calling him Jordan. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, one thing that's going to make it, I feel like, a little more popular, you said the every four years thing, right? But now that they announced that every season is going to end in a world championship. That's great. It's not every other year. Like, that is that's huge. Cause, that is. You know, I was, I was talking with my wife about it because she was like, you know, after the Olympics, you know, like, what are we going to do? Are we going to stay here? Are we going to go home? Well, you know, you have four years to the next one. I said, well, you know, yes, the Olympics is the dream, but making a world team and a world championship ah. is also. <laughs> For like, anybody who's not, like, People not in in track put the Olympics here, Worlds here. But for the people who are actually competing, World Championships is almost right there. I mean, Olympics is the uh, Olympics, but that's right there. And I'm so glad that they're having it every year. And I think we can get momentum because we had, because of COVID, we had Olympics, Worlds, and now we're having Olympics again. And then we'll have Worlds. So, like, we're having four, like, three straight years of where it it ends in a championship. Yeah. Whereas those past years when there wasn't worlds or there wasn't uh, Olympics, it was this weird thing. Like there was no end. People just kind of hung on and ran what, or threw in whatever meat that they yeah. wanted. Now there's like a definitive end. I mean, you'll have a few diamond leagues after worlds, but I mean, that's yeah. where everyone goes to. And having it last year in the States was huge. There were, the numbers were huge. Yeah. So like there's that, um, I don't know if you guys seen, they just announced, you know, like NFL red zone. Yeah, the a cold version zone. of that for the, cold zone, yep. the Olympics, which is going to be great. You know, even when like oh, so, so they're going to go from from each sport whenever something yeah. good's happening. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. so like that'd be pretty sweet. But it's even okay, so when the World Championships were in Eugene, right? You seen like the celebrities there, like Travis Scott was there, and yeah, like some other big. celebrities like that, and they're like. RG3 well, and Emmanuel Acho were locked yeah. in big, RG3 big does, does a great, a great job. But track, he's, yeah. he's doing great with that. Well, he was at the NCAAs last year and it was like, just him there and he was all pumped. He was tweeting about it and that's what we need too is more people because people don't know if they know he was a great 40 meter hurdler like he was, he was really good he, he would have been up there he would have been with like battling with grant holloway and stuff like that he was an olympic well, he was more level. 400 hurdler but he also but he did but he was olympic level in both he was good he yeah, both he was great. yeah but, but you know, i mean like, again if you are great in both and you have a chance to go nfl or go pro track no you're Easy gonna go pro <laughs> yeah i mean you're gonna go nfl okay even if you went to the nfl and sat on a practice squad you're gonna make more money than track. 200 i checked that today i you know i, I was talking to, to my fiance because i'm like i want these guys to get paid so much i'm like if you're on the practice squad you make two hundred sixteen thousand dollars for an 18 game season yeah and here's the thing like twelve thousand a week to not they're even play even, they're even playing a game and the thing is, like, we're not even on the team. I'm, not, I'm at a freaking U.S. They don't even dress. Championship meetings. I know it's competing in it. And Dave and I, I tasting like in it. That's not like I was just an alternate, you know. No, no you were there. 
You were third in this indoor worlds, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, the U.S. Nationals. Yeah, third. Yeah. Yeah, third. I mean, and, you know, and Dave and I talked to him. We need to start bringing back like the value of like the NACAC, the Pan Am, the Hispanic Games. Like those are big wins if you're in the track world, right? You could say mm-hmm. you're the NACAC champion, the Pan Am champion, the Hispanic Games champion. Like that's huge. But like again, nobody knows. Nobody like unless yeah, you're cool. in that track world, it's not, and it should be made a bigger deal. Now I'm curious that third year of worlds heading into Olympics. I feel like that could be an opportunity for a lot of people, right? Because I feel like some of the athletes might lay a little low in that world. I think that's going to be an awesome opportunity to see some new blood. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might be an opportunity to see some new blood and maybe the worlds after Olympics. Like, I think there might be people kind of like like taking it the the year after. Yeah, because you're going to have like Olympics, worlds, Olympics. Next year's worlds might be like, all right, like I need a break, and and then it's time for some of. You or guys know a lot of shit. Be like, everyone go to hell. I'm going to win every single one. <laughs> like, and I yeah. think that would be great if you have certain athletes that are like, do lay low, but then you have your Jakob Binger Britsons, you have your Ryan, Berg, Ryan Krauser, your Tanner Bergs, who go and wins a hammer championship and decides I want to defend it. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, the other thing too is, you know, um, <laughs> is getting the field events and the throw events to be shown on tv like a channel give it they will show it no no like like sh- all right yes we understand why they're showing the shot put ryan krauser is an absolute monster i get it but show the other events give the like well, they are so selective on what they show and I mean, and then I even that like they'll show one throw of the whole competition yeah, ryan krauser know. throws 75 feet okay well how did everyone else throw i don't I know. remember watching the this was last year, two years ago. The Milrose Games was on like Peacock or whatever. Yep. And like they showed like the form ups of shot put, and they're like, okay, let's go over to the three thousand meter race walk or whatever. And I'm just like, who the fuck wants to watch that? <laughs> <laughs> Show the last two laps of that. That's where well, that's so this is Ryan Krauser here. <laughs> like this is the greatest thrower that we've ever seen. Like this let's is watch the him. greatest shot putter that's ever lived in his prime. In his prime, and you guys are like, I don't know, fuck it. Let's watch some 120 pound dudes race walk around a track. <laughs> uh, <laughs> people, yeah. Some some people live for that. Yeah, but no, it, it isn't me. But. Well, I, you know the, the the problem with track two is is that there's so many things going on at once. It's it's not like you're putting a football game on TV or a basketball game where everything is focused on that one spot. It's there's so many things, but like, yeah, don't we have? Multi view for a reason. Like, are people uh, that mad if they have to watch like something in, uh, smaller? YouTube TV has. Yeah, you can, I, watch, you can watch like four different football yeah, games. Everything games. does. So, like, are are people that hard up where they have to watch it on a big like? I mean, people have their big TVs now. A quarter of the screen is still as big of a TV as I had growing up. <laughs> yeah, and it's still so, clear. You know. And here's the last thing, Tanner. I actually want to. I do want to let you go soon because you have your family and everything. But here's the last. Uh, they're thing. asleep. She's asleep now. So oh, nice. So, so you're free. You can talk on you want. Here's the last thing that I want to figure out, and I, I I tweeted about it from the Talking Novels account. Why in the hell is Cindy McLaughlin's account temporarily restricted? I don't know. What the hell's going on on X? Maybe she got hacked. Oh. I don't know. I, I if you click on it, you click yes view profile. It's normal. Ask Elon. I don't know. It's just it's just right here. But when you go out and go back to it, no, let's go. No, I don't want any horse. Get the hell out of here, horse. Oh man, that's go great. Back. How's that possible? You go to sit. Why is she temporarily restricted? Like I don't know. Can we get this. If anybody knows why. Can we find out? Because she's just like Cindy does nothing wrong. As far as I know, the, the woman does nothing wrong. She's been a great role model for the sport. She's arguably the most famous athlete outside of Noah Lyles. Just in the be sport. some sort of technical glitch. I don't know. It's been this way for a little while now, so I, I'm, I'm curious. Maybe she did that. Switching over to the normal 400 now. I don't know. Well, I mean, she better because Femke Bowles kicking her ass in terms no, of No, she's one. not. Femke is getting up. Femke is the world record holder in the 400 indoors. It doesn't matter. Listen, and if MK's racing, no to me isn't. I love MK, but she ain't Sydney. So Sorry. funny thing about MK, someone someone put on reels that if you just close your eyes and listen to MK talk, it sounds like Mickey Mouse, and it is actually right. hilarious because she kind of <laughs> yeah. does. Sorry, MK, I don't want to offend you, but you're uh, oh, she's great. Sydney was. I mean, she's a 400 meter hurdle record, right? Yeah, by, by a lot. lot. Yeah, by <laughs> I a, like, I mean, she, it was like every meet she was. She like, ran 50.6 for the 400 hurdles, which is. 
I was kind of wondering if she get paid to break the record every meet. So she, just I'm sure. Pizza, pizza uh, listen, she, is, she is doing well with New Balance. She's not hurting. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. she's certainly not. But I mean, Dave is confident that she's going to come in and kick Femke's ass. Femke's been racing. If she's healthy been, and and they're both healthy, I don't four hundred, and she's been yeah. doing better. But she still is not in the same league of times running all these races. Or as Sid's like, I don't have to run. I'm still going to come out and pop a forty eight. Or I listen. <laughs> I, I love Femke's strategy better, and the fact that she actually races is great for the sport. But I'm rooting for better. Sid, she's American, but I root so much for people that compete. Look, I'm sorry, people that are there, I root for them. So, Tanner, thank you so much for coming on, man. This was lots of fun. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. We, you know, and good luck with the uh, baby. It's you know, it's 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 a fun journey that I'm sure you will learn more and more every day as you go on and you know all we wish is that you guys get your your due your respect and you get paid because what you're doing now is is amazing but as you said and you, you and your wife you talked about it you're not sure how sustainable living like this could be long term yeah so let's hope that that some changes maybe this michael johnson league or there's other leagues that will pop up and that you guys get a chance to get rewarded for all the hard work and dedication that, that you guys have for the sport. It's people like like you who keep this sport thriving because you guys compete well, place well, but you also push those other athletes to work hard and to keep going. So I just wish you nothing but the absolute best. Thank you. So definitely go give TJ a follow. If you're on X, I'll throw it up there. It's at TJBerg99. And if you want to follow him on Instagram, it is, look at how fancy we are, at Berg Throws. So there you go. You can go follow on either of those. If you would like to follow us on X, you can go on at Talking at Ovals, but you could just go type that in on any social media and yep. you'll find us there. Um, thank you for everyone that watched today. Um, if you watch at X, still time, repost. Uh, let everybody know that you're watching it. So then even if when this goes down, they can watch it again later. And if you're on YouTube, smash that like button, subscribe, spread this word of mouth. Um, we will continue the trackstar.me Olympic dream series next week. Um, we're going to talk to more awesome athletes and Tanner. We've told this to everyone else. We're telling it to you. You've got, you've gained two fans. We are hundred percent supporting uh, you now. I mean, we're just going to pretend that whoever throws further between you and Justin, will just, you know, kind of <laughs> let's get in there. But, the uh, thing is, when we go to meets together, I don't, I, you know, I want to throw far. I don't want to throw further than me. So. Hey, listen, you want to get first and Great. second. You I'm first sure and the, him second. <laughs> I'm sure he'd say the same thing. Of so. course. Just promise me no Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan, okay? None of that going on between the two of you. No, yeah. no paying significant others for crowbars. No no, I don't I don't do that. <laughs> no, but listen, like I'm gonna be locked in on the hammer. Yeah, hell yeah. The jab. Like having all these wonderful guests on has really made me want to, you know, because I was kind of like a little bit of a running snob. Like, oh, oh those field events are great. I'll I'll watch them if they're on. But it's, 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 hard hard track to be. it's hard not to be because they don't because that's all that they show like, right it's hard like but you know tough. like i would go watch the shot putters you know when when i was coaching for a while that we had to start over here in jersey named nick vina who threw 75 feet in high school yeah you know I was, like just throwing like casual Jordan guys was on during guys through 76 feet in, in high school like yeah. that's yeah. insane yeah monsters out it there is. so we so we appreciate you coming on we wish you all the luck um you know we hope that it's you know it's you and justin representing in the hammer right uh that's yeah. we want to see you guys in there you know any of our past guests jordan we, in the shot jordan in the shot we just want to see you guys out there succeeding and you know living your dreams and again put it on the screen one more time give send go go on to that give send go <laughs> give some money and help these individuals live their dreams and become live like pros damn it that's all we want to do <laughs> all right everyone so we thank you so much for watching we will be back next week so long everybody yeah.